When everything around you seems to be changing, when the things you took for granted are no longer easily available, when the very foundation of your world seems to be shaking, it is good to turn to the one who never changes, to the one who never leaves us or forsakes us, to the one whose scripture reminds us is our dwelling place and underneath are the everlasting arms. To the one who created the heavens and the earth. To the one who chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. This is my first ever online sermon. I know my sermons are normally recorded but this is the first time I've ever delivered to a completely empty room. This is the first time I've ever recorded a sermon in my living room. Things have changed very rapidly from last week to this. Last week, many of us were together in our church sanctuary, sharing, as we always do, in conversation, in praise, in prayer, in the reading and preaching of Scripture. And now, well, now we're really having to think differently, both in terms of our daily routines and also in the way in which we must do church. But as I've prepared this sermon, I've been thinking of you. And as I'm delivering it now, I'm thinking of where you normally sit in the church sanctuary. And I'm imagining the various people who come to Bloomfield week by week. Last week, if you were with us or if you've listened to it um, on the website, uh, you will have heard that we were talking about the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, where he says to his listeners, do not worry. And we ended with the thought that no matter what, God is with us. And that that is not just good news, but the very best news that we can hear. This week we are once again in a very familiar place. Those words that we all know and love so well, the words of the 23rd Psalm. This has to be one of the very best known scriptures. And yet sometimes that Familiarity breeds contempt. We've heard it so very often that we think we know what David the psalmist is saying. Or perhaps worse, we've taken for granted what he is saying. So I want us this morning to look again at these familiar words and to draw from them comfort and strength. A life spent out in the hill country tending sheep meant that David knew intimately what it meant to be a shepherd. A shepherd was one who would do whatever it took to protect his sheep. A shepherd led his sheep to the freshest, lushest pastures he could find. He knew where the streams of clean, clear water were. He provided shelter and protection for the sheep at night. So when David says of God, the Lord is my shepherd, he is saying, God, you give me all these things. You give me food, you give me water, you give me shelter. I lack nothing. David knew what it was to trust God for provision of his every need. And what does it look like for us Christians in these challenging times to trust God for the provision of our every need? I was listening on the news yesterday to a representative of the British Retail Consortium. She stated that in the last three weeks there is an extra £1 billion worth of food in British store cupboards. Let's make sure we eat some of it. Are we trusting God for our food needs? Or have we played our part 
in hoarding food. Perhaps leaving it so that uh, others can't get what they need. Let's not fall into that temptation. This is a time to put our faith into practice. To do what we say we believe. To trust that God will provide for us. Another role of the shepherd was to guide his sheep along safe paths. Now you'll have heard me say once or twice that I like to walk in the mountains. And on the odd occasion when I've been up in the mountains, I've come across the remains of a sheep. The mountains are not a safe place. There are cliffs, there are bogs, there are places where sheep can easily get trapped or hurt. The job of the shepherd in David's time was to ensure that none were lost. Uh, that they were kept safe, that they didn't wander off. David speaks of the guidance of God through the journey of life, the presence of God through dark and difficult days, and also the comfort of God. Are these not words that we need to hear today? Think of how God has guided you in the past. Think of the difficulties you may have faced or indeed may currently be facing. God was with you and God is with you. Have you not known comfort in the strength of God throughout your life? We're in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic in uncharted territory. How will we get through it? We must be wise. We must listen to the best advice that our health experts are giving. But ultimately we trust in God to lead us in the right path, to keep us safe. God's perfect love casts out fear. So even in the midst of what seems a very dark valley, a place of fear for us and for many. God is with us. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear. At the end of the psalm, David speaks words of hope for the future. Of a hope which extends far beyond this life we experience here and now. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Words of hope for David. He knew the goodness of God and the great love of God in his own life and he looked forward to that day when he would spend the rest of his time in God's presence. And that's the thought that I want to leave us with this morning. Our world is shaken, yes. Things may get worse before they get better. But in time of crisis, our thoughts turn to ultimate realities. And the ultimate reality for us as Christians is that God loves us. God is for us and God is with us. We believe that God's kingdom will have no end. We believe that our life is more than just what we enjoy on earth and that one day we also, as David, will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us trust in God for all we need. Let us set an example in the way we live our lives. Let us keep trusting God in the midst of fear. And may we know God's guidance, God's protection, God's goodness, God's love, not just today, but all the days of our lives. Amen.